what we do in a basic eye exam. So in my eye exam, we're going to look at ocular health, make sure the eyes are healthy inside and out. Mm -hmm. We're going to be looking at refraction. Are they nearsighted, farsighted? Do they have astigmatism? And this is all stuff that you should be able to tell from the EHR, so we can break that down later as well. Then we're going to be looking at ocular motor function, their eye movements. Can they look and stay looking? Can they shift their eyes from side to side, say make saccadic eye movements like you do for reading? And then can they track and follow a moving target, which is pursuits like you would use for a ball? So those are all areas that I'm looking at and doing multiple tests to determine their ability. But there are also areas that we would be working on in vision therapy if there's a problem. Okay. Then we're looking at accommodation, and that's the ability to get things clear for different distances. So the lens in the eye is going to accommodate or become fatter uh, in order to look up close because it'll increase the lens power in the eye to get things clear, or it's going to relax its focus to look far. And there's, you know, four or five tests that we're going to be looking at for accommodation, specifically how much can they bring something up and still keep it clear? Um, can, does it stay clear all the way in or does it start to blur out here? Uh, what is their focusing flexibility like? Can they look close? Can they look far? Reverse it, look far, look close. Um, and then can they sustain that? Can both eyes keep things clear as we change lenses? So if they're having difficulty in any of those areas, either getting relaxing their focus, which is a plus lens, or stimulating their focus, which is a minus lens, if they're having difficulty with those areas, then we're going to say, oh, they have an accommodative dysfunction or accommodative insufficiency, and that's also what we're going to be working on in vision therapy. So covering ocular motor, accommodative skills, and then binoculars. So that's a lot more involved. That's convergence, bringing the eyes in, and divergence, bringing the eyes out. A base out lens will stimulate the eyes to converge. A base in lens will stimulate the eyes to diverge. So those are sort of the basic skills that we're looking at. But there are also much more um, complicated skills that we're going to be looking at. So we will switch over to here. And we're going to be looking at um, I'm just going to put say a ball and our hand. This is making it a little harder, but this is <laughs> visual motor integration, which is your eye hand, but also eye hand body integration. So can I look at something? Can I reach for it accurately? Can I catch a ball? Can I move through space and use my eyes to tell me where to go or am I bumping into things? So that's your visual motor integration, which is something again that we're going to be working on in vision therapy, but it's also something that we test for. Is that the same category as perceptual? It is part of perception. Um, I actually like to separate it out um, because this involves more integration with the body, physical, yeah. the physical, yeah, exactly. Okay. But yeah. the other area that we do look at, um, which you, you just mentioned, is visual processing or vision perception. I always use the term vision perception, but now processing, visual processing is a little more in vogue and people seem to understand that better. So vision processing is basically making sense of our world, understanding what we're seeing. So that's another whole area, but it involves a lot of different pieces. So it involves things like memory, visual memory, um, directionality, you know, where I am in space, laterality, this is my right side, this is my left side, um, form discrimination, just being able to discriminate in A's and A, whether it's twisted or turned. Mm -hmm. A lot of this are things that we test for um, in our per visual perceptual evaluation. So we will do an additional evaluation which is separate from all this. You can get a sense 
of visual motor integration problems and visual processing problems by looking at the Van Orden star and the chiroscope. So if those look disorganized, then we know that mm, we should be doing this additional testing. You can also determine if they have a visual motor integration or visual perception pro or processing problem based on the history. If they're saying, hey, I you know, can't focus or, or I can't um, play sports, um, I get confused when I do work, um, there's lots of reasons. So these are just some of the categories. Should I go work on my chart for now? That's good. Yeah. Man. And so. That looks fun though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm videotaping it, so you can join in later. Okay. Sequential memory is another one. Remembering things in sequence. Um, visual closure. Being able to see part of something and know that the whole thing is hiding underneath. And that's also um, constancy. You know, even if something bigger or smaller, it's still that thing. Can you go back to the underneath thing you said <laughs> about closure? Oh, closure. So if something's hidden, so for example, you know, this is hidden, oh. you still know that there's letters under there and that you can make sense of that word. Um, but those are some of the things that we're looking at. And these are these check boxes are all the things that we might be addressing in, in vision therapy. Along with visual motor integration, there's also auditory visual integration. So they should be able to communicate about what they're seeing. And that's also um, tests that we do in the visual perceptual evaluation to determine that, but you'll also see that when you see kids that say, what, huh? You know, if they're not able to understand directions, not able to explain themselves or communicate, then they're gonna have some difficulty with auditory um, visual integration. Well, the other big one that I, I almost forgot is visualization. That's really key for visual perception and visual processing. Um, and then if you're, say, working with athletes, you want speed. You want speed of processing, speed of visual processing. Anyway, these are all the things that we're actually addressing in vision therapy. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of information that we get in the examination, both through the history. Sometimes we'll look at other evaluations, psychological evaluations, occupational therapy evaluations, speech therapy evaluations. Um, but then also all that hard data that we have in the exam room, but also in the pre-testing, we do the Keystone Visual Skills, the Van Orden Star, and the Chiroscope. When you put all of that together, you get a pretty good picture of what's going on with the kid and what areas, or adult, and what areas we need to work on. So we're gonna target all of these areas that they might be struggling in. I would say some of them only have a couple of areas, but the majority of our patients have something that they can work on in almost all of these areas. Mm -hmm. So when we divide, devise a treatment program, we want to make sure that we're hitting all of these areas. Um, one of the other things that's in your manual, which I think is really important, is the Skeffington Four Circles. Skeffing. Skeffington Four Circles. It kind of looks like this. And this is you know, an hour long, actually at SUNY we do an entire day on the Skeffington Four Circles. But um, the, I'll just tell you quickly that one circle is centering, like where am I, uh, where is it? 